now available in paperback and e-reader from the author of Spinsterella, A Strange and Unusual Romance and Spellbound, The Darker Shade of Black Comes, from Legendary Magazine, and to get the conclusion of the Spinsterella trilogy in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers today. My new novel, The Legendary Mad Matilda, is all about Matilda Crowley's journey as she transitions from the industrial rave scene of the goth subculture to corporate America. And in that story, it's a subplot that is very important for African-American women because it's all, it's all about teaching about how culture is passed down from one generation to the next. Now, one of the key themes in The Legendary Mad Matilda was inspired by an old African proverb. And that old African proverb states that a race can rise no higher than the moral position of its women. And when it comes down to the moral position of the black woman, it's a very important one because as the mother, she is the first teacher of culture. And as the first teacher of culture, she is the woman who prepares her daughter with the values and beliefs that will allow her to not only enable herself to survive, but enable future generations to survive. Because as she goes, so goes the race. And in The Legendary Mad Matilda, Matilda Crowley's mother Muriel is making efforts to help her daughter transition from her life in the industrial rave scene to corporate America. And she's doing this because she understands that there are a lot of pitfalls and hazards in corporate America for black women, and she wants to help her daughter avoid many of those pitfalls in corporate America so that they don't derail her life in the way that it was derailed when she wound up being arrested at her last rave, Vamp Jam 1995. And that Vamp Jam 1995 is where Muriel finds out about Matilda's secret life as Mad Matilda, the industrial rave promoter. And she's not happy about it and she literally, after they get her home from the um, central booking, literally beats her daughter like she was a small child because she's just angry about this. However, after she finds out all this and deals with this whole arrest issue, she then sits down with Mrs. Purvis, who then explains to her that this could be a blessing in disguise. Now, a lot of people would think that your daughter getting arrested being something horrible. However, this is a blessing in disguise. And the reason why it's a blessing in disguise for the Muriel character is because she really has to sit down and think about her daughter in corporate America. Because corporate America for African American women is way worse than anything anyone would experience at one of these industrial goth raves. Now, these industrial goth raves, they are parties, you know, and raves are usually parties where anything goes, but corporate America is ten times worse than any industrial goth rave, and you need to be prepared to survive in corporate America. And as the Matilda Crowley character begins picking up the pieces of her life, after this arrest, she starts to realize that she needs her mother's help if she's going to transition into corporate America, because corporate America, again, for black women, is filled with pitfalls and traps, and one of the most dangerous pitfalls that most black women fall into is their perception of white men. Now, Matilda's perception of white men was explored in Spellbound, the story of Matilda's relationship with her father because Matilda is a biracial girl from a black mother and a white father. And her white father was concerned about her entering the goth subculture and becoming part of the goth subculture. And that story was about her baby bat years and her relationship with her father in the goth subculture. And that story transitions into this one because this story is about Matilda's relationship with her mother and how her mother helps her by teaching her about the culture of corporate America as it relates to black women. Because as it relates to black women, it's a very different world than it is for black men. Because as the corporate world is for black men, it's a hostile environment against them. However, 
it's a very tricky world as it relates to black women. Yes, corporate America lets black women into it. However, there are numerous pitfalls that a black woman can fall into. And one of them is related to white men. And this is something Muriel wants to teach her daughter. And this is something Jason wanted to teach his daughter as well. And they do so in one of the chapters, explaining to her that the white men in corporate America are not going to be like her father because her father sees her in one way as his daughter however the men white men in corporate America are not going to see her in the exact same light and they're not going to see her as some sort of quote-unquote person from the rainbow they're going to see her as just another black woman moreover some of them are going to see her as some sort of sexual object and someone they can use for easy sex. And this is something Muriel tries to teach her daughter before she enters corporate America because she understands that many of these black women out here, they deify this white man, they worship this white man, and they elevate him to a high position and their perception of him is as someone who is superior and someone great. And this is something she tries to teach her daughter about and something to look out for regarding these white men. And she also teaches them, her, that many of these white males are predators in this work environment and that she has to look out for those white males because they are a serious threat to her. And they can not only derail her life, they can also derail her career. And just getting involved with the wrong one in the wrong relationship can cost her everything she worked for and this is something that I believe most black girls needed to learn and that's why I put it in the story because when it comes down to many black girls they enter corporate America and they're thinking that they're gonna have this great career and then they see these white men in the offices they have this fantasy perception of them and then as these guys start paying them some attention what happens is they start losing their minds, they get spellbound, and they believe because this white man is paying them some attention, they have some sort of elevated value, and then they get interact with this man, and then they go with him outside and have um, encounters with him after work, and then what happens is after they've had these sexual encounters with this white man after work, he then dumps her, and then she winds up feeling bad, and then she tries to go to HR to get sexual harassment cases against him and it doesn't work and then what happens is she winds up losing a very good job as a result of not knowing about the pitfalls as it relates to white men and her perceptions of white men and this is something that most mothers really should be trying to teach their daughters about entering corporate America because not only do you have to keep it professional in the way you dress and the way you conduct yourselves but you have to keep your professional in the way you interact with people on the job especially these white men out here and this is a lesson that I felt needed to be presented as one of the subplots in this story because the Matilda Crowley character as a African-American woman needed to learn this lesson early on if she hoped to have the career that blossomed into her executive position in Spinsterella. So I wanted to show how this character began her foundation and that foundation started because she had a self-aware intelligent black mother who made efforts to teach her a culture. Moreover she had support from a neighbor who was a part of the black community and part of the old school Harlem that was built up during the Harlem Renaissance also no, and the and in the neighborhood of Sugar Hill which is a historic black neighborhood. So she passed, Mrs. Purvis passed her culture on to Muriel Crowley, and then Muriel Crowley passed her culture on to Matilda Crowley. So the culture of two black women from two different generations was passed on to this girl, black girl, and that's what enabled her to have a almost 19-year career at the Amalgamated Consolidated Corporation. And more, as I see it, again, more black women need to start teaching their daughters about the pitfalls of white corporate America because so many black girls wind up falling into these pitfalls. They come out of school like Matilda does. They enter corporate America. They think that there's all these opportunities and a lot of them wind up 
getting messed up in their careers or wind up quitting very good jobs as a result of it. Yes, they'll get another job, but the whole thing is is that their lives wind up getting derailed overall. And most of all, they wind up compromising their integrity and their other intangibles all because they have been taught to deify and to worship this white man. And when they get in the presence of this white man, they see him as a god. Excuse me. And they see the attention as he get him as a getting attention from God, and that's what leads to them winding up messed up later on, or wind up becoming a workplace side piece, or winding up getting caught up in an extremely dysfunctional situation. But Muriel Crowley, in the after seeing her daughter fall, um, get arrested at this rave, it really she really turns takes this opportunity to take her daughter and prepare her for her future because she takes this what could be considered in many cases a tragic situation and she turns it into a blessing because this tragedy is one of the things that helps the Matilda Crowley character grow and it helps her not only understand the pitfalls of corporate America but it also helps her to understand several of the pitfalls of dealing with the business aspect of the club scene of the goth subculture and that goes on later on in the book and it helps her understand how to deal with not only white male predators, but it also helps her deal with black male predators. And I really give you a really balanced picture of these predators throughout Legendary Mad Matilda and how they look for females to exploit and take advantage of. And it's all in this story really is about Matilda Crowley learning a bit more balance about the goth subculture because she's in some ways spellbound by the club scene in the same way black people are spellbound by the idea of fitting into the black box. She really wants to fit into the goth box of the rave scene instead of seeing the broader picture of the goth subculture and her coming out of the goth subculture for a while as she deals with the crisis from this arrest and then later on trying to transition into a corporate job helps her get some perspective on the goth subculture and in her adolescent phase and helps her to see a bigger picture as related to the goth subculture and it also gives her a bigger picture as related to the black community and it helps her really establish what she wants to do with her life what direction she wants to go in and that's why this book is really a major part of the Smithsterella trilogy and it's a part of the trilogy you really need to pick up because this is the book where the Matilda Crowley character makes that transition and she starts laying that foundation for her future and it leads into several major events in Spinsterella and leads to many plot points in Spinsterella. So this one you really need to pick up. And you can pick up The Legendary Mad Matilda at Amazon.com by clicking the link in the description box or other online booksellers. It's a great book and I really think you'll enjoy it. Now available in paperback and e-readers, e-steam essential, the devil's deep to the turning point in our life. Powerful Steam Series story. Get Steam Essential at online booksellers today.